In this video, we're talking about how to find the domain and range of a function. And in this particular problem, we've been given the function f of x is equal to 10 to the 2x power plus natural log of quantity 21 minus 3x. So we need to find the domain and range of this function. And this process is going to be similar but also different depending on the kind of function that you have. When we talk about the domain of a function, what we mean is all of the x values for which the function is defined. The range then of a function is all of the y values that you can get back when you plug in the x values from the domain. So how do we go about finding domain and range? Well, for domain, we're looking for values of x where the function is not defined. And we're staying in the realm of real numbers. When you have a function that includes a natural log, a square root, a fraction, you want to pay attention because if you have a natural log function, you know that a natural log cannot be defined where the argument inside of the natural log is less than or equal to zero. In order for the natural log function to be defined, the argument inside of it has to be greater than zero. So for example, in this function, we could say that the function is only defined when 21 minus 3x is greater than zero. This is similar to if you had a square root inside of your function, we can't have a negative value underneath the square root sign, so any value you had underneath the square root, you would want to set greater than or equal to zero, and that would limit the domain of a function. Or if you had a fraction, a fraction is undefined when the denominator is equal to zero, so you would want to set the denominator not equal to zero, and that would limit or restrict the domain of the function. If there's nothing like that that's limiting the domain of the function, then what we say is that the function's domain is all real numbers. And we denote that with this symbol here that represents all real numbers. But in this case, we have this natural log, and that's always going to limit the domain of the function. Again, the argument has to be greater than 0 in order for the natural log to be defined. So what we want to say is that the domain is restricted by this inequality. 21 minus 3x must be greater than 0. So that's going to restrict our domain. There's nothing about 10 to the 2x that's going to restrict our domain. Because if you think about it, any negative value of x that we plug in here, or if we plug in 0, or if we plug in a positive value of x, we're still going to get a real number. So there's really no issue here. The only issue is with this natural log term, where the argument has to be greater than 0 in order for the natural log to be defined. So now we want to solve this inequality for x. We'll add 3x to both sides and we'll get 21 greater than 3x and then we'll divide both sides of the inequality by 3 to get 7 greater than x which we could also write as x less than 7. So x has to be less than 7 in order for this function to be defined. Therefore the domain of the function is all values x less than 7. So we can go ahead and say that the domain of the function is given by the inequality x less than 7. And again, not x less than or equal to 7, because if x were equal to 7, and we plugged in 7 up here, we'd get 7 times 3, which is 21. 21 minus 21 is 0. But the natural log function is undefined when the argument is 0. Natural log of 0 is undefined. So we have to have x literally less than 7. So 6.999999999 or less in order for the function to be defined, and therefore the domain is x less than 7. So that's going to be our domain, but what about the range of the function? Remember that the range of the function is all of the y values that we can get back as a result of plugging in any of the x values in the domain. So for values of x, we could plug in negative numbers, we could plug in 0, or we could plug in positive numbers all the way up to 7, just not including 7. So again, that 6.99999 number, anything less than that, negative value 0 and positive values up to 7 but not including 7. So if we plug in values like that to the function for x, what values can we get back for y? Sometimes you can determine the range by sketching the graph. If you sketch the graph of this function, you may be able to look at the graph and see where the function is defined for y. Otherwise, you may be able to figure it out algebraically. I'm going to show you one way to do it that's pretty easy here. So we're going to pick some test values for x. So let's pick something close to the largest possible value we can have for x, which would be that like 6.99 number. And then let's pick some other easy values like 1, 0, and negative 1. These are all x values for which the function is defined. They're all x values that exist in the domain of the function because x is less than 7 and all of these numbers are less than 7. So if we plug 6.99 in for x here and we get 10 to the 2 times 6.99, 
the result is approximately 9.55 times 10 to the 13 power, so a very, very large number. If we plug 1 in for x, we get 2 times 1, which is 2, 10 to the 2, which is 100. If we plug in 0, we get 2 times 0, which is 0, 10 to the 0 is 1. And if we plug in negative 1, we get 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 10 to the negative 2 is 1 over 100. Now if we plug in these same values to natural log of quantity 21 minus 3x, plugging 6.99 in here, we're going to get 6.99 times 3. That's going to give us 20.97. When we subtract that from 21, we're going to get 0.03. So natural log of 0.03, which is about negative 3.51. If we plug in 1, we're going to get 3 times 1 is 3. 21 minus 3 is 18. Natural log of 18 is about 2.8. Nine. If we plug in 0, we get 3 times 0 is 0. 21 minus 0 is still 21. Natural log of 21 is about 3.04. And finally, if we plug in negative 1, we're going to get 3 times a negative 1 is a negative 3. 21 minus a negative 3 is going to be 24, so natural log of 24 is approximately 3.18. So here's why making a chart like this is helpful. We picked the value that was pretty much the largest possible value of x that we could have picked. 6.99 is about as close as we can get to 7. And when we plug that into our function, what we see is that for this first term, we get an extremely, extremely large number. This number 9.55 times 10 to the 13 is greater than a trillion. And then this natural log of quantity 21 minus 3x is about negative 3. So when we add those two terms together, we're still going to get a huge, huge, huge positive number because we're only going to subtract a tiny number when we take away this natural log of 21 minus 3x. So the function's value at 6.99 is going to be very, very, very positive. Then the function's value at 1, we're still going to get 100 plus 2.89. It's about 102.89. The function's value at 0, when we add these two terms together, is going to be about 1 plus 3.04, 4.04. When we add these two numbers together that represent the value of these two terms at x equals negative 1, we're still going to get a positive number. And what we would see if we kept going is that even if we take a much larger negative value for x, so instead of negative 1, we take something like negative 100,000, we're still going to get a positive value for 10 to the 2x and we're still going to get a positive value for natural log of quantity 21 minus 3x. And when in this function we add two positive numbers together, of course we're always going to get a positive number. So what this tells us is that the result of plugging in any value x less than 7 to this function is always going to return to us a positive value for y. Therefore, we can say that the range of the function, while we can't give specific or exact values, we can say that the range is going to be y greater than 0 because we know that y is always going to be positive no matter which value for x we choose as long as we choose a value for x that's in the domain. Therefore, we can say that the domain of this function is x less than 7, that the range is y greater than 0, and that's how you find the domain and range of a function.